Hey everyone, it's Ashley Elizabeth here and I am so excited that you are joining me for this Memorial Day. I have a craft project God has just burned into my heart and I cannot wait to share it with you. You know, over the past couple of weeks I had been praying about this and just seeking God for, you know, what He would have me teach on this. And I believe He kind of spoke to me in the midst of that and He said, you're going to need two things for this project and one of them being a piece of old barn wood and the other one you're going to need is an old book. And I thought, Lord, I have no idea what you're going to call me to make with a piece of old barn wood and an old book, but I'm going to collect those materials and I trust that you're going to tell me what to do with them. So I messaged a sweet sister of mine and she had brought some old barn wood back from Alabama and she was willing to share. So we have our piece of old barn wood. And I actually had an old book uh, in my craft basket. I bought it several years ago at the thrift store. Uh, I make lots of crafts with book pages, so I ha already had this one, uh, you know. And and I thought, Lord, I've got my old book and, and my piece of barn wood. Where do I go from here? And that day, my Bubba walked into the house and he saw this piece of old wood laying against the wall. And he said, Sissy, that is a piece of rotten wood and it will never be anything beautiful, okay? So you need to get rid of that because the only thing you're going to accomplish by bringing that in our home is to bring termites in here. So you need to get that out of our house ASAP. And I had to laugh. You know, he really puts up with a lot living with his baby sister. Um, you know, because it's my whole ministry. I drag stuff home all the time. Really ugly, ugly stuff, you know. And uh, But the Lord began to speak to me through that. And he said, Ashley Elizabeth, a lot of Americans in today's age, they look at America just like Bubba looks at that piece of wood. Like it's old, it's rotten, it's torn down, and it's at the point of no return, and there's no hope for it. So you just need to chuck it out to the side of the road. You know, we have Americans that have even turned their backs on our country, and uh, it, it's heartbreaking to see that on the news. Um, you know, and I believe... Uh, you know, the Bible says that people will perish for their lack of knowledge. You know, that your very ignorance will be the destruction of you. And I believe the enemy uses ignorance as one of the biggest weapons formed uh, to rip America apart from the inside out, to make everyone so ignorant uh, and to turn on their own country, become hopeless of the situation, turn on their own country and to destroy us, you know. But the Lord began to speak to me on, on that, and He said, I want you to teach a lesson kind of on that. And uh, as He was doing that, I, I pulled out this old book because I said, I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to make with this, God, uh, but I, I'm just going to start, you know, preparing and ripping out the pages, and, you know, I trust that you'll tell me. And as I was ripping out these pages, I realized that this old book, I'd never read it before, never looked at it. It was a Christian book. And some of the chapters were based upon scriptures. And one of the chapters was called The Best Laid Plans. And it said, uh, it's out of 3 John 4, and it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children would walk in the truth. You know, and I thought, Lord, you are speaking to me right now, you know, about this, this curse of ignorance and that God's greatest joy is not that we would walk in ignorance, but to walk in his truth, you know. And I, I turned it to another page that I was ripping out. And this chapter was called, A Time to Love. And the scripture that came out of it was based upon Ecclesiastes 3.8, which says, There's a time for love and a time for hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And I put this down and I said, Lord, I, I could not make this up if I tried. The fact that I had to listen to you, I had to be obedient, even though I, I could not see where this was going. Uh, and as I'm doing so, I, you're, you are speaking to me through a book that I bought years ago at a thrift store. Uh, I had no clue that it even had scripture in it. I just bought it because the pages were yellowed and I thought it looked cool. Uh, but you are speaking to me through this. And then he led me to a scripture. And it actually was a scripture that confirmed what I was actually supposed to make uh, today. And it comes out of the book of Psalms 91.4. And it said, He will cover you with his feathers and he will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and your protection. And you know, in today's world, a lot of Americans, we're looking for that security and that protection from all sorts of worldly things. We're looking to it from a president, a, you know, politics, a government, uh, wealth. We're, we're looking for our security and all these worldly things. But, but God's word right here says that his, his promises, 
you know, God's faithfulness uh, are what give you your armor and your protection, you know, from this battle that we are in. And I found it to be so precious when he led that to me, uh, you know, through through his word. Uh, and and I, I just thought, Lord, you know, I, I know that this, this project is going to reflect this. And he spoke to my heart and he said, yes, now I want you to make something that's a daily reminder of that. Not to put your hopes uh, that the... America will ever be made beautiful by people, places, things, you know, not anything worldly, but America will be made beautiful again by God's word when our country decides that they want to turn back to the biblical principles that it was founded on. That's when we're going to find revival. Not when, you know, we get a, a president to take control. Not when we uh, have a government that changes, you know, things that are happening in our country. But when we turn it back over to the Lord, that's when we're going to find that America is a beautiful uh, place again. I cannot stress how important it is to sit down and talk to your children and teach them about this so that they do not fall into the ignorance of this world that we are dealing with. Um, it On this Memorial Day, you know, people just, it, they take it so lightly. They think it's another day just to have at the beach or a day off of work or school or whatnot. And it is not, I cannot stress how important it is to take time out on this special day to reflect that we have men and women who serve this country, who have died serving in the armed forces because they believe that there was something worth fighting for. They didn't look at America like this piece of old barn wood. They believed that there was something worth salvaging here and they fought to give us the freedoms that we have so America could stay a beautiful place. And for that, I am eternally grateful for our soldiers and, and our military. So I hope that this blesses you. I hope that it stirs something inside of you to really uh, reflect on, on the meaning of this holiday. Uh, and, and I hope it just leaves you with an ounce of hope that America is not at the point of no return, that it will be made beautiful again and only by the blood of Jesus Christ. I love you so much. I hope you have a happy Memorial Day. You take care. You be blessed. And until I see you again, you take care. Bye-bye. You guys know why we celebrate Memorial Day? Yes, ma'am. Why? So we can honor all the soldiers that put their lives on the line and died for us in battle to give us freedom and peace. That's right.